wonderful song. Can the church say amen to that? God has blessed this church with music. And music has touched our hearts. It is part of praising God. Thank you, Lord, for that wonderful music. Thank you, Sister Honey and Tisha and uh, Brother Elder Fun for that for sharing with us the message of that song. Um, Elder Bernard, thank you so much for um, reading the text in Psalms, a very powerful one, and also Kaylee for reading our text for consideration this morning, and Jeffy for the story for the kids. Um, good afternoon, everyone. You know, I have good memories about water jars and water. Back in those days in the Philippines, when I was young, we don't have fridge. So when you want a cool glass of water, you go to a jar. My grandma has a, an old jar and Without electricity, you just get cold water from the jar. I don't know if some of you experienced that, but we have almost a lot of jars in my grandmother's home. The biggest one is next to a, a, a faucet, you know, where in the roof, where we gather water from the rain. Big, big jar, and um, I used to jump into the jar and have a swim inside. Uh, wonderful memories about jars and water. And I remember old folks would tell us uh, stories about water creatures and monsters just to keep us away from swimming in, that, uh, in those jars. Very wonderful uh, story about jars. And so when I prepared my message this morning, I went and studied about jars. And it's found in John chapter 2. I may not be able to read the full text, but I just wanted to read verse 7, where I got the title of our message this morning. It's in John chapter 2, verse 7. And the Bible says this, Jesus said to the servants, fill the water jars, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. That's what I get our sermon. Full to the brim. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we once again come and ask for wisdom coming from you. Let the spirit that has inspired the writers of the, of the book to be the same spirit who inspired us to understand today. In Jesus' name. Today, I will be giving a short message. I know some of you wanted short messages, but I hope that this short message, even though how short it is, would impact you in a special way this morning. This morning, we don't have the luxury of time to go down the path to discuss what sort of wine was made in this occasion. Um, but I'm quite sure that the water here that God turned into wine was a very good wine. Because Jesus would only produce the best. Neither will I try to raise a question regarding the quantity, the great quantity of wine. You, would, you probably would say, why so much wine? We don't need that much wine. Um, well, God, when he supplies, he supplies everything. What I learned from this parable is that Jesus not only supplies us with our necessities, but he also gives us little luxuries. He not only gives sinners enough to save them, but he gives abundantly and so liberally. Remember the story of the five loaves and two fishes, 12 baskets full of the man. 
God blesses a body. Now, I will, you know, in this story, we can extract a lot of lessons, but as I've said, it's a short message, so I'll just share three important lessons that I've learned these two weeks from this story. The first lesson that I've learned this week about this miracle was it was simple and practical. Jesus, when performing this miracle, did not summon the leaders. He did not summon the scribes. He did not summon the Pharisees, even the kings and princes of the world to see the evidence of his work and authority. He did not even call the master of the feast or the bridegroom or even one of the guests. But instead, our Lord did it quietly with the servants. He just told them to fill those pots with water. In fact, he didn't even ask for new vessels, but used what was there. He didn't search for an enologist or any winemaker to do the work. It was so simple, so practical that he made no fuss or big scene or a grand display. The miracle was not done in a theatrical, sensational way with props everywhere. This was not the style of Jesus. Instead, Jesus did it with genuine simplicity. Here's the lesson that I've learned. For us, whenever we serve Jesus, don't make a fuss about it. Don't make a big scene or a grand display. Do a good thing and do it as natural as you can, just like Jesus. The second lesson I've learned from this story is that when Jesus bestows a blessing, he usually gives a command. Second lesson, follow his command. The process didn't consist of Jesus saying, let there be wine. He can do that. You know, in creation, say, let there be light. That there, he could just say, let there be wine. But he did not do that. It all began with a command addressed to the servants. And the command was, fill the water pots with water. When Jesus was about to give sight to the blind man, he put clay on the man's eyes and said, go in the pool of Selam, John chapter 9, verse 7. A command, then the miracle. When Jesus was going to restore the withered hand of another man, he said, stretch forth thy hand, Matthew chapter 12, verse 13. A command, then a miracle. To the ruler's dead daughter, Jesus said, Maid, arise. Luke chapter 8, verse 54. A command, then a miracle. To the dead Lazarus, he said, Lazarus, come forth. John 11. A command, then a miracle. To the dry bones, Ezekiel 37, 4. Ezekiel says, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. A command, then a miracle. Life came. He commanded them to hear. A thing which dry bones can't do. He issued his command to the dead. He issued his command to the dry to the helpless, and by the power of God's command, life came. When Jesus is about to bless, he challenges our obedience by issuing 
his royal orders. His command to us is this, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Matthew chapter 28. A command and then the blessing. I will be with you. Brethren, receive God's blessing by following his commandments. Final lesson. I tell you, beloved, we can extract more lessons from the story. But just one more for our consumption today. Final lesson, obey no matter the cost. Two things the Lord commanded the servants. Verse 7, Jesus said, fill the jars with water. Command number one. Verse 8, Jesus said, draw some and take it to the master. Command two. One command was easy. One command was difficult. One command was safe, the other was life-threatening. Why did I say that? Well, I say the command in verse 7, fill the jars with water, was easy and was safe because anybody could easily do that. You and I could do that. Fetch water from the well or from the tap, fill the jars, it's easy to do. And even the, the Bible even say that they filled them to the brim. A little child could probably do that. But the second command was not that easy. You know, sometimes when God commands, it comes with a challenge. In verse 8, God says, draw some and take it to the master. Friends, we need to obey the Lord, his commands at all costs. Why was this so difficult? Why was this so life-threatening? Well, the servants knew that what was needed during that occasion, during the time, was not water, but wine. They also knew that what they are about to serve was water and not wine. In those times, Servants are severely punished, even can be put to death for doing or serving the wrong thing. I can only imagine what the servants might have felt, felt offering wine from jugs filled with water. It could mean their heads. It could mean their life. But they were willing to risk their lives for it. The Bible says they did so. They obeyed no matter the cost. Let me propose. The miracle in this story came not after the servants filled the pots with water. The miracle in this story came after they decide to go and serve the guests. Don't hesitate to follow difficult commands coming from our Lord. You might witness a miracle. Conclusion. Why I like this story for two weeks, this story has been racing back and forth in my mind. For several months, our pastor, Pastor Shasha, he has been encouraging me to take the challenge of serving the Isle of Man Church. And with my current situation, working in the fish factory, I was asking the Lord, Lord, I pray that a double portion of Pastor Shasha's spirit be upon me to carry on the work he had begun here. And then I tried to evaluate myself 
and the situation that I am currently in. Let me tell you, church, even with all the best that I can do, all that I can offer this church, my church, your jars, your cups, is water. That's all that I can do. And I'm asking myself, is this water able to satisfy, able to meet the needs of my beloved brothers and sisters? Do you also feel the same way when working for our Lord? Like the best that you can offer is only water. In your home, in your workplace, amongst your family, friends, and colleagues, are you asking the same question? Could this water that I could offer satisfy or meet the needs of my beloved brothers and sisters? This story in John strikes a special chord in my heart because even though all I know and I'm good at is to fill water pots with water, that I am still needed in the work of my Lord. Because it is not me or anyone else that could bring satisfaction. It is only God who can only bring true satisfaction. He could still perform a miracle even in the simplest thing that we do. Jesus didn't use an enologist. He didn't use an expert winemaker to do the work. He used ordinary people like you and me, servants with simple skills and talents to do great things for him. Brethren, let me bring this home. Each one of us is commanded to serve one another. We are to help one another. We are to fill up one another to the brim. It could probably be just a simple thing like water. A tap, a gentle tap, a smile, a word of encouragement, a silent prayer. These simple things may look like water, but it can become a miracle for others. Together, just like the woman at the well, let us lift our empty cups and let God fill us to the brim, even to overflowing, with the best wine only he could offer. Wine that could truly satisfy. Amen.